At number 10, less developed. Back in ancient times, there were so many civilizations around the world who were growing and developing their own customs, tools, and other innovative ideas. Each civilization advanced at their own pace, but when it comes to Mesoamerican civilizations like the Mayans, some have wondered why they weren't as advanced as others from different parts of the world. While the Spaniards, who later colonized many Mesoamerican places, were using guns, the Mayans were still using swords and shields. Many Mesoamerican civilizations never even developed iron tools and stayed using things like stone and obsidian. This is a mystery that has boggled the minds of many researchers. The theory as to why they might not have advanced as much as other civilizations is that it had to do with their environment. To develop a civilization to the level that others around the world had, the advancement of agriculture and animal domestication had to be successful, and because the lands in which the Mayans lived were home to very few native animal and plant species, it made it hard for these people to advance and therefore caused some difficulties for them. And number 9, Body Modification The Mayans, much like like other Mesoamerican civilizations were big on body modification. The modification process often started from birth and continued to be a staple in their society for many years. Some of their body modification practices included skull shaping, where they would use wooden planks to alter the shapes of baby skulls, dental modifications, where they would drill holes into their teeth and insert gems like jade and iron pyrite into them, and even tattoos. They also had a lot of piercings in their culture, from earlobe to nose piercings and even tongue piercings as well. Some of the elite members of society would pierce their tongues with a stingray spine and then pull a thorn freckled or obsidian crusted vine through it. One of the most intense body modifications that they practiced was forcing their kids to become cross-eyed. From a young age, parents would hang beads from their kids' hair across their foreheads so that their kids' eyes would focus on it and over time they would become cross-eyed. This was a sign of beauty because they associated the look with the way a jaguar's eyes looked before they attacked their prey. Now before I carry on talking about these Mayan mysteries, I would first like to ask you guys to leave a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and also maybe consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one. At number 8, Naming Their Kids these days, there are so many ways to name your spawn. There are baby name books and websites. Every year, there is a trending list of baby names for parents to choose from, and some even just go with family names for their kids. But back in the days of the ancient Mayan civilization, name your kid was a very simple process because it just depended on what day the kid was born. The Mayans had a name for every day of their calendar year, so depending on which day you were evicted from the womb, that's the name that you were assigned. That means that there would have been a lot of people in their city with the same name. Name. For boys born in the Mayan civilization, they were just given the name of the day they were born, but for girls, they had to have the number 9 in front of their given name as a sign of feminine power, which I find pretty interesting. Imagine if that was how we name people these days. Based on the Mayan naming system, how many people do you know that might have been given the same name as you? Number 7. Math One of the earliest uses of the number 0 being in mathematics came from the Mayans. Thanks, awesome. They were super advanced in their mathematics, I would say for their time, but no, in general they were advanced. We're still trying to understand how they achieved what they did without calculators, it's impressive. They drew complex hieroglyphs on long strips of paper made from fig tree bark. They didn't have much to work with here, yet somehow it was still enough. The Maya numerical system only had three symbols. This was long before Bedmaz was born. They had zero, one, and five. That's it. You could literally count on one hand. There's a shell shape, a dab, and a bar. These numbers went from zero to 19, and then they would count groups of 20. By the time 36 BC rolled around, the Maya were introducing the concept of zero into their numbering system. Thanks, guys. I failed math twice because of those zeros. Cheers. Number six, glyphs. Glyphs at number six, six glyphs. One of the most advanced forms of writing when it comes to all these ancient Americans, the Maya were the most ahead of their time. They invented the glyph, which are these symbols that represent a word or a sound. Like anything else in this civilization, it's beautiful to look at, of course. The Maya used around 700 different glyphs. They're detailed, they're beautiful. A good amount we're able to translate today, but there's still a mysterious chunk that we're trying to figure out. The earliest glyphs engravings go back to the third century BC, meaning that the Maya are the pioneers of writing in Mesoamerica. There are only a few civilizations where writing naturally occurred. The Mayans, ancient Chinese, and the ancient Mesopotamians. Number five, rubber. Rubber is a fundamental. I mean, sure, the long-term effects for rubber are questionable in turn. Now we have literal pits full of tires, but where did it all begin and why? 
The Maya created art, they looked to the stars and made calendars, but what did they do when they wanted to have a good time? Mayan meals were composed of maize, squash, and beans, with tons of crops. Turns out the Maya were the ones who created elastic, long before Mr. Goodyear over here. They made elastic from latex by mixing it with other plants. They really created bouncy balls, if anything. They took latex from trees and mixed it with vine juice. This was around 1600 BC, and you can't invent rubber balls without creating some. Number four, ball games. Yeah, imagine inventing a bouncy ball. You can now create any game you want, any rules. You'll never lose again. How great is that? The Maya have pretty impressive ball courts. These games were all but fun, honestly. These were religious events. These games would last around 20 days on average, so I hope you warmed up that harm because you're going to be here for a while. The pressure was always on also from the overlords as these courts were built at the bottom of a sanctuary. Yeah, hey, no pressure, but uh, your ex is here with Zeus. Break a leg. The go-to game was called Pocket Talk or Hodgepodge, and you had to throw a heavy elastic ball through a hoop. Instead of fist bumping at the end of the day saying good game, good game, good game, the losing side would either one, not survive, dark, or they would have to give over all of their belongings, which also sucks. Yeah, a 20 day game, and then you'd lose all your stuff. That's horrible, what a horrible month. At number three, burial rituals. On the topic of Mayan death beliefs and rituals, we should talk about their mysterious burial rituals as well. For the Mayans, death was a big part of life, and when you were laid to rest, that wasn't the end of your burial ritual. While your soul was passing through either the underworld or paradise, things were still going on with your remains even years after your passing. The Mayans had tombs for their dead, they often wrapped the bodies, placed them in specific positions, and even provided the person with food for the afterlife. But even after their burial, the Mayans would often exhume their loved one's skeletal remains years later and paint them bright red, and this was especially common for key Mayan rulers and officials. But that's not the only way that they practiced ceremonial burials. Sometimes before being buried, they would cremate the person and the remains would be placed in decorative urns. It all just depended on the person and their level of importance in their society. At number two, currency. Before I get into the ancient Mayan currency, I want you guys to leave a comment down below telling me what your currency is. I think it's so cool to see how many different types of currency there are around the world, so let me know yours. Now let's get into how Mayans paid for things. They used chocolate as their currency back in their heyday. The cacao bean was a big staple in Mayan culture and they had been cultivating it for years. It became so important to them that they even created a deity devoted to the bean. They started off using the cacao bean as a food source, creating chocolate beverages and food, but soon the cacao bean evolved in their society, going from being something edible with bartering value to being a legitimate currency. There are ancient Mayan artworks that depict the cacao bean being used as money in their society, and it's just fascinating. Do you think that you would have liked to pay for things in chocolate? If that was a thing, I wouldn't have any money. And finally, at number one, downfall. The biggest mystery that surrounds the ancient Mayan civilization is what the heck happened to them. To this day, no one quite knows for sure what happened to them and how their civilization died off. During the 8th and 9th centuries, the centers of the Mayan southern lowlands started to decline and they were abandoned not too long afterwards. This decline was coupled with the decline of architectural advancements and construction. There are a few theories to explain what might have happened to the Mayans, like overpopulation, foreign invasion, peasant revolt, or even the collapse of key trade routes. More environmental explanations for the Mayans' decline include environmental disaster, sickness, or even climate change. Some research have even theorized that there was a 200 year drought that might have contributed to the civilization's collapse. Right now though, we have no idea. So by far the most mysterious thing that the Mayans did was disappear. Kicking off the list at number 10, astronomy. You ever wanna date somebody, but they're a Libra and you're a Gemini? Oh, ain't that the worst? Look, dating apps even have this now as a feature. You can write down what your symbol is. Like, hi, I'm Kyle, I'm a Leo, and I love waking up early. Those are real bios for real people, and we have the Mayans to thank for all of this. The Maya studied the stars. They were the pioneers of our calendar, which I'll explain a little bit later on, but they also created lunar months. They figured that 81 lunar months added up to 2,392 days, meaning that one lunar month is 29.53 days, incredibly close to our modern moon month, which is crazy. They nailed it that long ago. They also studied Jupiter, Mars, and Mercury. They studied where each planet travels to and when. If you're a Libra, like me, smash that thumbs up. 
I'm a late Libra too. We're just trouble. We're the worst of the worst. Number nine, the Mayan calendar. It's 2022, which means the world thankfully did not end in 2012, but the Mayan calendar predicted that on December 21st, 2012, apparently it would be this massive doomsday. No, no meteors hit, that was all false. That wasn't a real thing. Thanos didn't snap any of us away, nothing like that happened. But that day did mark the end of their 5,125 year long count calendar. Yeah, and you thought you were a planner, okay. The Mayan calendar is extremely accurate. Their calendar is 10 thousands of a day more exact than the calendar that the world uses today. They're that precise. We have leap years and stuff just to try and correct it. They used 20 day months and had two calendar years. They had a 260 day sacred round and then a 365 day year. Every 52 years, these two calendars would coincide with one another and this was referred to as a bundle. Imagine if we still had this now, that'd be so confusing. But 10, Nine, eight, what are we saying? Seven. Number eight, chocolate. When I visited the UK, the, the first thing I noticed was how much better your chocolate was. So good. I'm not sure what y'all are doing over there. Maybe it's just made with love. Who knows? But I'm a huge chocolate guy and the UK nails it. Yeah, wash it down with some iron brew. Buddy, what a day, what a great day. The Mayans as well, turns out they loved chocolate. The old Mex of Mesoamerica figured out how to consume chocolate, but the Mayans made it beautiful. They added some spice to it, literally. The Mayans would mix chocolate with water, chili peppers, and honey. They would make a spicy drink. Are you into this idea? Is this making your lips happy right now? Spicy chocolate drinks? My tummy can barely handle a pumpkin spice latte, let alone a Mayan milkshake. No, thank you. At number seven, sacrifices. The ancient Mayan people were another society who practiced human sacrifices as part of their religious practices. Already, the notion of sacrificing a member of your society to appease the gods sounds pretty gruesome, but when you learn about some of the details of their sacrificial practices, it gets a little scarier and a little mysterious too. In their religion, they would sacrifice people like prisoners, slaves, or even regular everyday people. They would start by painting the sacrificial person blue, and they were sometimes subjected to torture as well, depending on the context of their sacrifice. Then they would be led up to the top of one of their pyramids, and either be showered with a volley of arrows, or have their heart ripped out through their chest while it was still beating. Talk about heartbreak, right? Yeah? No. Okay. To make things even more gruesome, sometimes the assistant priest at the sacrificial ceremony would then skin the sacrifice and the head priest would then wear the skin and perform a ritual dance. Yeah, it's super gory and definitely something that I'm glad that I won't have to experience. At number six, Mayan graffiti. Now here's something really mysterious that I find quite interesting. Turns out that the Mayans did graffiti, yeah. So next time you're out and you see graffiti in your own city, you can look at that and know that the Mayans did the same thing. The Mayans were obsessed with writing, and so they would write and draw on anything they could, including their own stone walls. Archaeologists have found many etchings in stone in many ancient Mayan cities. These etchings were made by people carving into plaster using stone tools or obsidian, and the graffiti usually depicted things like people, animals, deities, lion carvings, handprints, and other glyphs. At first, when researchers discovered these carvings, they thought that they were made by children who lived in the communities, but after further research, they realized that these markings had more of a purpose rather than just being random drawings. No one really knows why they did graffiti, only that it was just there, which really kind of just adds to the mystery of the whole thing. At number five, Mayan creationism. Whether you believe in evolution or creationism, no one really knows for sure how the world began. There are a number of theories from both sides, but again, it's such a huge notion that it's next to impossible to know where everything began. Every culture has their theory, and the Mayans were no exception, and they even came up with their own story for the creation of life. The Mayans believed that the Earth was created in 3114 BCE, and this date coincides with the beginning of the Mayan calendar. According to their mythology, the world was created in four parts. First came the animals, then wet clay, then wood, and then finally humans, which were said to be made out of maize, which is essentially corn. They believed that all of this was created by artisan gods who crafted the earth and the heavens like sculptures. It's a pretty cool story, but again, we will never know if their theory was actually true. At number four, afterlife. For the Mayans, their version of the afterlife was quite intense and complex. 
They thought of the afterlife as the soul's journey to paradise, but there was also no guarantee that said soul would actually reach eternal peace. First, a person's soul would have to pass through a terrifying underworld that was said to be the home of frightening deities who had names like Bloody Teeth, Flying Scab, and Bloody Claw. Already quite scary, right? Thankfully, not everyone had to endure this terrifying journey to the underworld. Those who were exempt were victims of sacrifice, women who died in childbirth, those killed in warfare, and people who died playing the game Pocketok, which was their bloodiest sport. So really, you had to earn your death in this culture, otherwise your journey to the afterlife would be brutal. Which makes a lot of sense as to why death and sacrifice were such a huge part of their culture, because no one wanted to die a lame death and have to face bloody teeth and bloody claw in the afterlife. Even though some Mayan souls were believed to have found their way to paradise, they also believed that life was a never ending cycle going from life to death and back again, so even if you did reach paradise, you might not have stayed there for long before being thrown thrown right back into the circle of life once again. Number three, art. Of course we have to mention art. I'm not saying the Mayans invented art by any means. Each of these ancient civilizations had their own way of expressing the afterlife or life in general. Art was just everywhere. The Mayans specialized in decorating stone landmarks. There is only a handful of woodcut art pieces, but the most popular are these stone pieces from Copan and Caragua. They're extremely complex as well, obviously. Look at these. Rock climbers couldn't even get their fingers in these greaves. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. Yet somehow people made them. These zoomorphs here are giant rock sculptures created in the shape of animals, which are always fun. And of course, the Mayans are also famous for their wall paintings dating back to 200 BC. One of the most well preserved is at Bonampak. Look at this. This is incredible. We often look at Egyptians and their art, but this is incredible too. Often overlooked. Number two. Laws. The Maya made their own ball games, they made their own rules, they made chocolate their own way. But they also created law and order. In a time where food and shelter was sparse, you would think it would be a lot like the Dark Ages. Just a bloody mess, you know, full of thieves and bodies and bad stuff everywhere. Well, when you're the first civilization to create the death penalty, everybody is pretty well behaved afterwards. More than fair. Yeah, fair. Taking the life of others was uncommon because of these harsh laws. I mean, you remember how those ball games would end, right? Yeah, imagine crimes. If you were to take the life of another, say you lost a ball game, all your goods are now gone, you react in a horrible way, well, who comes knocking at your door asking questions? Who says you're now a suspect? Sherlock Holmes? No. Say you live with somebody and they commit a crime. Well, not only are they now gone after they get caught, but the victim also gets your land. They get all your goods, cattle, your home, everything. So whoever lives with you as well, well, you better pack your rubber balls. You're out of here. You don't live here anymore, thanks to Good Game Gordo over here. I'm glad certain things stuck around, like the law and order part, but uh, imagine being evicted because your roommate stole some beans. God damn it, Craig. Don't do that. And finally, number one, the underworld. Also referred to as the place of fright. Okay, save the best for last, we love it. Zibalba comes from Mayan mythology. Overseen, of course, by the Mayan death gods, Zibalba came to be in the 16th century Verapaz. The entrance to such a wonderful place was in the cave of Guatemala. So, splunkers beware if you're putting that on your agenda. Maybe avoid this one. Caves in Belize are actually known as the entrance to Zibalba, these water-filled caves again, and they span as far as 300 feet. That's a massive evil front door you wanna avoid right there. But you can't just grab a snorkel and frog kick your way to the underworld, it's not that easy. According to ancient Maya scripture, the Popol Vuh, this path once filled with dark obstacles, and when I say dark obstacles, I mean dark. I'm talking a river filled with scorpions and blood combined with houses littered with bats and pure darkness. It's not easy to get through. It's like those haunted houses in Niagara Falls. It's really scary. This is why you don't cheat in Mayan ball games. You end up here. Do you wanna be here? No. In fact, if you cheat in Monopoly, I believe you also end up here. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Stacy. Don't cheat. 